This video will look at sales organizational structure. It will look at ways in which organizations may configure themselves to enable them to succeed in the delivery of their marketing plan. In other words, it will enable them to achieve more sales. So what is the, the most uh, efficient marketing configuration to enable them to succeed? <coughs> So, let's start. Well, sales organizations must be structured efficiently with a sales plan, roles and responsibilities. Each individual in the sales team has agreed tasks. So, at the very start, we, we must recognize that organizations must have a plan. They must have a sales plan. And within that sales plan, individuals will be identified as making contributions to certain parts of the plan and there will also be responsibilities on individuals to deliver parts of the plan and these will have been agreed by those participating the sales team are designed to meet corporate goals and must be organized in a way that allows for effective communication between other functional departments. So efficiency is the, the key term here. In other words, the, the, the teams should be designed not just to achieve the goals set out, perhaps set out in the marketing plan, but they must also have effective communications. They must be able to contact each other, update each other, uh, make sure that uh, everything as it happens is, is known and where they're working, what they're working on and where they're working is known to their line manager. So that there is <coughs> effective control right throughout the whole sales um, delivery organization. So the sales department or the marketing department, whoever is dealing with this, they must know who's doing what, they must know where their efforts are and what tactics or what they're doing. And then the onus is on the departmental head to configure that department so as to optimize in that effort. An organization must be structured that enables the organization to achieve higher profit margin market share and customer loyalty. That's what the, the organization wants. It wants essentially these three uh, components. So it's, it's able to ensure its position in the market and also have customer loyalty so it will grow and develop and stretch into the future. And also a high profit margin so it can pay shareholders and pay operating costs and and maintain itself, perhaps invest in new equipment and um, develop over time. So the organization must be structured so as to enable the achievement of, of these uh, outcomes. A sales organization is a process of organizing the sales team for the selling of products and services. So sales organization means looking at the product, looking at the market and then configuring the sales team in a way that optimizes their chances of success in the marketplace. So it's it's a, a difficult thing for organizations to uh, look at markets because the markets may be separated out geographically or they may be in different markets uh, around the world and in different locations but also there are issues with communications, language, uh, cultural issues um, there's a lot to, to take into account when trying to configure the sales team to optimize on their objectives. So this is where um, skill, knowledge and expertise is required on behalf of the departmental manager. A successful sales organization requires coordination between departments and communications between employees and management. And the channels of communication should be 
clearly understood and the responsibilities of the managers um, perhaps the manager within the department and then perhaps there are uh, other managers under him or her that also need to be briefed and who will have delegated power but the communications channels should be such that the, the team who are working on the project know who to uh, speak to and, and who to address in, in, in the event of needing advice or, or reporting back so there's no wasted effort in finding their way around the organizational structure of the department. The aim of the sales organization is to establish the roles, rights and duties and responsibilities of the sales team and individuals. <coughs> so the aim of the sales organization is to codify, to note, write down and approve the roles, the rights and the duties and responsibilities of the sales team and of individuals within the teams. So who is doing what and what's the approach that's going to be taken. Now this is to avoid maverick behaviour, to avoid uh, individuals within the team uh, doing their own thing, acting uh, as if they were out of control. It is a controlled exercise and all of the team should be working from the same s perspective, the same set of rules. So as to give the customers a view of that the organization is consistent. So it's important to have not just the channels of communication between the various members of the team and the organization itself, the departmental manager and perhaps the managers uh, under him or her, but it's also important that the responsibilities and the duties of the individual members in the team are clearly articulated and clearly understood, not least of which by that member, him or herself. Each member of the team must know his or her responsibilities and duties and rights. An efficient organizational structure helps develop effective communications. The flow of communications should be upwards and downwards in regards to sales decisions. So an efficient organizational structure should have communications built in. There should be clear uh, lines of communications within the organization. In other words, uh, everyone within the organization knows who their line manager is. They know who who they are reporting to. But they also know if there are subordinates below them who will report to them. And there is no ambiguity about these channels of communication. They are clearly indicated. So that there is a good flow of communications up through the organization and down to the, the sales operatives, the representatives or the uh, the sales personnel they know exactly what they're doing and they're all working towards the same plan they're all delivering the same message and there is a consistency therefore in the mind of the consumer regarding the product and regarding this particular organization effective communication allows information and decisions to flow between management between head office and the employees. <coughs> so it's important that uh, any change in direction that the organization may, away, uh, may want to make, that that is effectively communicated throughout the organization and communicated efficiently. Uh, information can become distorted over uh, communications channels. The, the sender <coughs> may transmit uh, a particular uh, type of information or, or a, partic a particular piece of information uh, but the receiver <coughs> because of noise on the line uh, or noise in the in the process will receive something different now this is going to happen when there are poor communications channels and this is the subject matter of a separate video on the course so I'm not going to go into it here but <coughs> 
having good communications is essential so that there is um, clarity about the message being sent and how it's interpreted and it should be interpreted in the same way by all those that receive the message it should not be ambiguous sales organization structure avoids duplication of resources reduces costs expenses and uh, increases productivity so <coughs> the sales organization should be efficient in other words uh, channels of communication should not be duplicated because that would also lead not just to the additional costs of that duplication but the possibility of conflicting messages if they're being sent down two channels um, then there's a possibility that variations in the message may be detected which will lead to confusion at the receiver end so sales organizations must have uh, efficient use of communications channels to ensure that their directions to the sales staff are clear and all the sales staff get the same message and they all interpret it correctly as intended when designing a, sa uh, a sales structure the following factors need to be taken into consideration all factors are connected and will impact on the choice of structure so first of all the the product or service this should be clarity about the product or service it should be clearly understood what the, the product or service is its desirability its uh, its nature its attributes um, in other words the sales team know exactly what they're selling they are familiar with it they may have had training in the use of the product or in its maintenance or um, they will certainly be uh, au fait with all the operational aspects of the product if it's a service they will know what the the customer expects and they will know what the service addresses in terms of customer needs they will also know the organization and they they will Im they will know the impact of the organization on the sales activities but they will know the, the structure of the organization they will know as I said earlier the channels of communication within the organization they will also know the support that the organization can give them and the um, the aftercare service associated with the product or with the service so those two um, are quite essential then something we call them the marketing mix well it's not really the marketing mix in the traditional sense of the marketing mix you know the price price place product promotion and so on uh, it's not intended in in that way but the marketing mix is is more of um, the activities that the marketing team go through in trying to make sales and sometimes they are constrained by their inability to change price or change location or change the product or uh, they have to work with what they've been given nonetheless th through their expertise and skill they may know the market and know the market requirements and be able to uh, be effective in that marketplace we'll talk more about the um, marketing mix we'll talk more about all of these points in the coming slides I'm just introducing the points in this one and there are also external factors that need to be taken into account um, these will be similar to what we would pick up in a pest analysis which again is the subject matter of separate videos but uh, there is the, the political environment the economic the social the legal um, and of course the environmental factors the physical environmental factors that uh, are becoming so important and uh, customers are becoming so conscious of these because of um, the impact of pollution and 
uh, waste and depleting uh, finite resources that we've gone through over the last <coughs> probably 50 to 100 years. Now this impact is making customers more aware of the need for environmental factors. As I said I'll talk about this more in a few moments. So to start we'll take the, the first one, product um, or service. The type of product or service impacts the type of sales structure an organization can adopt. Uh, frequently demanding are um, necessity products such as uh, produce, oil, toothpaste. Th they require large but flat structures as it meets consumer needs at a large scale. So the type of product determines the, the type of sales activity and the type of sales organizational uh, design that's required. If um, the product is not in much demand and it's not a it's perhaps seen as a luxury product or an occasional purchase then the organization may structure itself differently. What we've got then is um, an idea that the size and nature of the product determines the sales organizational structure. A larger sales team need to be recruited to meet the needs of customers who demand frequent products. The structure tends to be very complex as it involves a lot of sales activity. So the more popular the product is, the more sales team um, members will be required. But that also creates complexity about communications, making sure all of them are saying the same thing and uh, they're all singing from the same hymn sheet, as we say. They're all working towards the same set of objectives. They're all trying in the same way. And <coughs> any variation within that can cause uh, confusion in the minds of the customers. It can lead to a loss of sales as the customers think that the organization is confused or sending out mixed messages. So it's very important that the sales team are briefed and stick to that brief. The organization, well, a small organization will serve a small customer group. There will be a limited or few products to produce and sell. The organization will require a very basic structure. So imagine a small company producing one product. Then it does not require a large sales team, by and large. Although in an age of globalization, it may be that that one small company producing one product may have a single sales representative in, in the country in which it's based, but it may also have agents in other countries because of globalization, so as to try to gain sales in those other markets. But generally speaking, small organizations have a very basic sales structure. Specialized or luxury products serving in niche markets require simple sales structure as there are fewer customers. So again, <coughs> luxury products may require fewer sales customers because there are fewer customers. They're in niche markets. There are fewer customers. The communications with the customers, however, may be expensive. If we think of, for example, expensive watches or cosmetics, the companies who produce these have large expenditures on marketing materials, on advertisements in magazines and uh, on television and in, in various outlets. But the number of personnel selling those items may be f in fact quite small because it is a niche market. If an organization is large with 
high production capacity and various distribution channels, then the organizational structure will be large and complex. So if a, a company is producing something which has a mass market, um, let's say a particular type of confectionery or a particular type of um, product that's popular in the home, then it, the chances are it will have a large distribution um, complex. It will also have um, quite a complex sales organization to support uh, the markets and the selling activities within those markets. So large organizations with high capacity selling uh, popular items tend to be more complex. Size and marketing. Now the size of the organization is influenced by the type of market and the size of the market. So the size of the organization is determined by these factors. And when we talk about marketing mix, I mentioned it earlier, this is really what I've got in mind here. It's a mixture of marketing strategies, not the traditional marketing mix as, as we know the term price, place, product, promotion, etc. Um, this is a marketing mix in, in terms of the types of strategies that may be adopted by an organization um, trying to configure itself to make the best use of its sales team in the marketplace. Now the size of the organization is clearly important and the type of market and the size of the market is also important. We just mentioned in the previous slides that if an organization is making a very high selling, uh, highly demanded product, uh, then it will have more sales representatives. But the complexity of the product will also be a function in determining the number of sales representatives. It may make just a few of the these items, but may have a considerable sales staff because the item is complex and the the need to perhaps even sell in teams rather rather than as individuals. Organizations serving a global market um, are seen as to have a larger structure and adopt a range of distribution channels in order to reach a wider customer group. Well, clearly if the organization is selling internationally, it's more complex. There will be all sorts of issues to deal with. Currency, um, language, culture, um, all sorts of issues to overcome and making sure that sales teams who represent the organization overseas are briefed to the same extent as the sales team selling domestically. And if for no other good reason, there should not be uh, the potential for reselling into the domestic market. It shouldn't be the case that the item is so cheap overseas that purchaser overseas are able to resell it in the domestic market. So it is more complex to to sell overseas and there will be more um, sales personnel required as a consequence of that. Smaller organizations are selective in their distribution choices and prefer uh, smaller scale uh, sales activities such as opening an outlet rather than using intermediaries. So smaller organizations, um, they tend to have more control over the product, but sometimes they are reluctant to sell through intermediaries. They're, they want to have direct sales themselves. It depends on the product, it depends on the size of the market, depends on their location. Um, but it may be that the company wants to, instead of selling the product on to wholesalers or on to distributors, uh, the company might want to sell directly itself to the market. 
So it depends on the um, the size of the market, on the complexity of the product, and the overall, I suppose, configuration of the market in terms of disposable income, effective demand, and <coughs> the ability of the customers to not just understand the product, but see the product as filling uh, a requirement in their in their lives. <coughs> now, external influences. Well, organization structure can be influenced by external factors such as competition and the use of intermediaries. Um, the structure may be um, partially determined by the amount of uh, competition in the market. Um, it may be that the sales team need to be familiar not just with the product of the company but with the product of the competitors. Looking at what their products can do and being capable of doing a comparison between the organization's product and those of the competitors. Because it's natural for customers to ask about the differences uh, in terms of functionality, in terms of aftercare service, pricing, uh, distribution, all sorts of aspects related to the product. So it may be that uh, a much more extensive uh, selling team may be required because of the, the presence of competitors in the market. But it may also be the case that um, the competitors are using intermediaries and may have given the intermediaries special discounts to stock their products and perhaps even try to negotiate exclusive distribution rights with them. So companies may find it difficult to place their products on the market because the wholesalers and the distributors are now pledged to one of the competitors. If that's the case, then the company faces quite significant problems. Due to competition, there is a growing need for organizations to grow and expand into different markets, causing organizations to change and adopt more complex structures. Well, we know that there has been pressure on companies to uh, engage in selling overseas in, in other markets. But <coughs> sometimes products need modification uh, to be effective in other markets. But also the sales team will have a much more complex structure and holding the sales team uh, together, holding the sales team so that they are all passing out the same message, they're all working to the same plan, Holding that team together is also more complex and will require more managerial resources. The use of intermediaries and their role impacts on organizational structures. Intermediaries need to work as a network to ensure the organization is growing and increasing the customer base. But <coughs> having intermediaries means uh, perhaps trying to do deals with outlets, uh, with um, wholesalers and distribution uh, outlets. It, it's trying to do deals with them to, uh, for them to promote the product in their markets. But that in itself is complex because that may involve training or it may involve um, significant contacts between the organization and those outlets. So it may be explicit training events, or it may be something less, just training by contact, by discussion, by explanation. But if the product is going to be successful in other markets and requires the intermediary's involvement, then this is an issue that the organization must prepare for. They must have appropriate personnel with a the appropriate skills to deal with the intermediary and who will know the local market that the intermediaries are serving. Again, it leads to more complexity in terms of the sales effort. 
Now, designing a sales organization structure. Well, a sales structure can be designed according to the needs of the customer and the sales team. So it depends on which way we go, and there are a variety of ways in which we can address this. The following are sales structures. It could be on a geographic basis. So the sales structure may be that the country is divided into regions, and there are almost autonomous sales efforts within those reason, uh, regions. However, the essential or the core message about the product must remain constant across the all of the regions. This is the, the nature of branding. This is the nature of trying to establish the product across a wider geographic area. But there may be concentrated selling efforts within particular geographic areas. There might be product uh, specialization structures. Sometimes the organization may vary the product according to markets and market requirements. So in one market the product is of a particular type and in a different market of a different type again. Um, it, it's, it may be that the organization deals with it that way. And I'll talk about these in, in more detail in the coming slides. It could be customer based. Um, just contacts with the customer. So let's look at the geographic structure. Well, a geographic structure is the most commonly used structure by the sales team. It's very common. Um, so there will be a sales team in, in the cities um, making effort to promote the products within the cities. Um, there may be different sales team working in rural areas or in the more country type of areas. Um, there will be different sales team again in different parts of the world or in different countries. And what they're trying to do is to match the product to the requirements of that specific market. The sales team are arranged into specific areas where they are assigned sales activities. So the sales team will uh, become specialists in that particular area and will um, look at that product in from the views of the customers within that area and feed this back to the organization who can then help in the development of sales material based on that feedback, the feedback of their perceptions about the requirements in that particular geographic area and what the uh, what the product is offering. The sales team have their own territory, and they make sales within that territory. So there's no encroachment uh, by other sales teams. the The sales team uh, look after a particular area, and they will get to know the area, get to know the people within the area, build up an expertise about the area, and be in a better position to make sales as a consequence of that. If there was encroachment from other parts of the sales team into that area, it may lead to confusion and mixed messages, which may alienate the customer. Regional divisions consist of sales managers and sales staff that support the overall goal of the organization. So, regional divisions um, tend to have sales managers who are responsible for the region and then sales staff and they work as a team to develop that market in that area. So we have in terms of geographic structure we have um, an organizational chart similar to this. This is now looking at the the marketing effort. So we'd have the director of marketing at the top then we have the national sales manager, let's say, and then we have different divisions. On the left we have um, divisional manager for the east, and then in the middle we have divisional manager for the north, and then the divisional manager for the west on the right hand side. And under those managers, the divisional managers, we'll have regional sales managers, and then district sales managers, and then the sales staff. Now that's uh, a few the the reference 
uh, for that is given on the bottom right hand side. Um, that's a view of a structure that may be deployed by uh, adopting a geographic based sales uh, effort. Now the advantages of geographical structures, well the benefits of this structure is that the sales team are assigned a territory and they are responsible for sales activity within that territory. So there is responsibility, there is accountability and that means the effectiveness of the sales team can be monitored. The geographic structure um, allows for better customer service and communication between customers and the sales team. They're in a better position to meet customer needs. So the fact that they're based locally means they are more accessible and they're able to uh, address issues should any arise and address them more effectively and, um, and quicker. But they also have local knowledge and that's a very important part of this equation. Better marketing strategies can be devised for each geographic location. Product modification can be made to serve a particular need for an area. So it's possible that the product may be tweaked in some way, may be altered in some way to make it more acceptable within that particular geographic area. Again, because of perhaps cultural issues or um, lifestyle issues uh, in that area. So the product may need adjustment to make it more acceptable in that area. Now the disadvantages of the geographical structure. Well, it's costly as there is duplication of staffing function and conflict over resource allocation across territories. So there are problems because it's, it's not as if the organization can have one marketing effort that covers everyone. It may be the case that it has to have different marketing efforts in different regions or in different countries. But that means having more selling staff, more marketing effort employed and more selling staff to, to gain the sales. But also, there may be issues where managers within those different geographic locations understand that their budgets are maybe less than somebody in a different area and they have more population to serve and there may be conflicts and issues based on these type of concepts. So it may lead to disputes between the sales teams some may feel relatively deprived. They may feel that they're serving a big population and haven't been given the same budget as a neighboring area uh, who has perhaps uh, less to serve and have a bigger budget. The salesperson is required to sell a range of products offered by the organization. This may be difficult as the salesperson must have in-depth knowledge or specialized technical understanding of the product. So it could be because teams are working in particular geographic areas, the teams have to know all the products that they're selling and have to understand the technicalities of those products. Whereas if it was one national campaign, there may be someone with a particular specialization, a particular knowledge about the product and they can handle issues related to that specialization or, the, or questions based on uh, that type of specialization. But in different geographic areas it may be that the team have to look at all the products of the, the company <coughs> and understand all of the issues associated with the product. And also, <coughs> excuse me, and also be able to um, deal effectively with questions and with uh, issues within the team regarding knowledge of the product. And also, and a lot of 
issues here, but also adhere to the selling instructions of the company at base. The company from its headquarters, wherever it's located, will have issued instructions about the the type of selling it wants to engage in, uh, what should be said about the product, how the product should be presented, and so on. So this local sales team have to be familiar with the requirements of the headquarters, the technicalities of the product, and the requirements of the local market, and be capable of answering specific questions about the product from customers within that market. So it's quite a big demand on that sales team, who may also feel somewhat isolated from the main uh, business itself. Salespeople have a poor understanding of buyer behavior, as they are regionally concentrated and only have an understanding of their own area. And that is an issue. The, the sales team may become more parochial they may become more concentrated or more focused on their area and to the detriment of the, the product and the company who may wish to expand expand its uh, presence and uh, may also want to expand into neighboring territories but the sales team may have a poor understanding of uh, buyer behavior and they may be concentrated regionally and they may have their focus may be on the local area not on the wider regional uh, possibilities so again <coughs> it will require training and intervention by the headquarters of the business to ensure that the local sales team in those geographic areas have the right skills competence, competencies and mindsets to enable the business to grow and expand perhaps into neighboring territories so there are disadvantages to the geographical structure now let's move to product specialization structure a business that offers a range of products tends to apply the product speciali uh, specialization structure so <coughs> first point to note is these businesses tend to offer a range of products. Uh, in comparison to the geographic structure, in this structure salespeople have specialist knowledge of the product they are selling. So in this case the sales team have expert knowledge of the product, of its uh, quality, of its the technical side of the product, uh, the usage of the product, how it should be effectively used. Um, so the team have are well briefed and knowledgeable about the product. The structure is based on individual products. Sales activity and sales team is focused on that particular product. So in this case <coughs> the company may make several products but the, the teams are organized around one product. There will be a different team associated with a different product. So any questions or any issues related to the product can be de uh, dealt with effectively. <coughs> Clearly this depends on the size of the product, the, the price of the product, the sales volume to justify this type of um, sales structure. But it does mean that the, the sales team have no particular issues regarding the product. They understand it completely. They are specialists in that product. If a second product is in the area, there will be a second specialized team who deal with that product. So here we have director of marketing who have got product A and product B. And then under product A we have the sales uh, manager and under product B we have the sales manager for for product B and we have got a very straightforward um, diagram the company in this case makes two products and there are two teams 
who are dedicated to selling those products. Now the advantages of <coughs> product specialization structure. Well there's better focus and attention on each product in the product line. So the, the product or the structure I should say offers better customer satisfaction. The, the, the customer is able to ask questions get clear answers. Uh, there, there's no ambiguity about the product. There's clarity on the side of the, um, the sales team. And that is communicated effectively to the customer. The salespeople have specialist knowledge about one particular product. They're able to serve customer needs better than the, the geographical structure. So <coughs> the customers have clear answers to their questions and are able to make informed decisions about the product are able to question about the product, get clear answers and make clear decisions. There is less conflict and interference from other functions and departments as each product has employees allocated to task and responsibility. So we looked at a company, the diagram we had earlier, which produced two products, A and B. Well, it's very similar to two companies producing one product because there are different sales teams, um, there are different products. It's just that they go back to a common source of production. So there are advantages to the product specialization structure. But there are also disadvantages. The structure is costly to maintain because additional sales staff must be recruited and trained for a particular product. So, <coughs> irrespective of the amount of sales, there must be a team maintained with expert knowledge about that product. There is a lack of coordination between product categories. This is often leads to du um, duplication of sales effort. For example, sales calls can be made to one customer twice about two different products. So it could be that there is duplication and wasted effort. So one of the sales team contacts a particular customer and then later and quite separately and as a coincidence the other team contacts the same customer to try and sell the second product. Or perhaps it would have been better if one person contacted the customer and tried to sell one of the two products or the two products at the same time it would be more efficient. So there are situations where there is duplication and that's disadvantage of this type of specialization. Organizational costs are high because this structure requires more staff, more specific training needs for different product categories. So, it is more costly. There are more staff, generally speaking, when there is this type of specialization. Um, there's a lot more training required and a lot more briefing and a lot more meetings to pass on the messages and a lot more in terms of communications and questioning and understanding. There are the benefits that the customer is dealing with specialists who will sell the product. But clearly it, it depends on the nature of the product. If the product itself is not very complex, then this may be an overkill. If it is a very complex product, a piece of machinery or something of that nature, then it may be felt that this is justified, having specialist teams. But it is more expensive more more people will be required and a lot more training will be required as well. The customer based structure well larger and more complex organizations that occupy several markets can adopt a customer based structure. This structure 
is customer driven. Each salesperson sells all products to one customer group. This structure benefits the organization as they cater to different customer segments. Different departments can be developed to meet the needs of different customers. So this is a customer based structure. Large organizations tend to use it. Um, they can occupy several markets and can adopt a customer based structure within those several markets. Uh, they sell products to one customer. Each sales person sells all products to one customer. So it's um, it's good use of the sales team. Uh, each member of the sales team can sell all of the products and they can sell all of them to one customer. They can mention all of them in their uh, in, in their meeting with the customer. But they're not specialists. If the customer asks sophisticated questions they may not be uh, capable of giving accurate answers. It does depend on the nature of the product this type. If the product is very simple then this may be appropriate. But if the product is complex there could be problems here that the the selling personnel may not be able to effectively answer the questions of the customer. So that's perhaps what it would look like. Um, we have perhaps sales managers for industrial customers and salespeople. Wholesalers may have their own. Uh, retailers may have their own salespeople. And there's a direct for sales. So it depends on the nature of the product. It may be that the, the company make something, make a product, and then it's, it sells directly to the final customer. And there will be a sales team who are um, briefed and required to go out to make the sales that the company need for its, uh, for its existence. But um, each member of the sales team will try and sell all the products that the company make. And it's seen this as, as a, an effective use of the sales team. The danger is, as I said, uh, they may be asked questions or they may be probed uh, for details about the product that they can't supply, they don't know. So training and briefing is very important and support documentation. Perhaps nowadays um, support in the form of uh, video material that they can present to the customer and online support to back them up. Now the advantages of customer based structures. Well, the benefits of this structure helps build better relationships between salespeople and customers. Uh, customers meet the person, the person has um, quite a few products to sell, uh, they're able to spend time with the customer. If there are questions that they can't answer, they may seek um, solutions and answers by communications channels such as the internet or phone calls or whatever and give the the answer to the to the customer. But it tends to have a good relationship. There seems to be a good relationship between the sales personnel and the customers because there is uh, there is direct contact and it seems probably a more friendly way of of dealing with the customer. When the sales team were specialists they were seen as technical specialists and that may be some off-putting to some customers. But this one it could be a friendlier encounter. Strategies and market plans can be developed to meet specific customer needs and their requirements. Sometimes customers may say that they, they want something, they want uh, a product that does, this, that does the following. And they may have a, a product that is currently being produced by the organization in mind, but just think uh, it could be um, altered to meet that particular need. 
some additional functionality could be added to the product. And that could be fed back to the organization who may find it's cheap and easy to do that. So it's been customized to that market. And everyone will, will like the solution. The customer will get the product that he or she wanted. The sales team will have made a sale and will have made good contacts. The reputation of the business has been flexible and accommodating, will have been improved. And the organization, of course, will have made the sale that it wanted. It all depends, of course, on, on the nature of the product and the complexity of the product, as I keep saying. The salespeople have specialist knowledge about their markets and buyer behavior. Well, the sales team may have specialist knowledge about the, um, about the markets. They will certainly build this up over time. And the longer they work in that market, the more expertise they will uh, acquire. They will know about personalities as well. They'll know about who's involved in the organizations and what their likes and dislikes are. So that they, it becomes more affable. It becomes a, a friendlier encounter. So they, they know the buyer behavior. They know what the buyer is looking for. Uh, it can become, although it may be dangerous, but it, it could become more informal. Um, dangerous in the sense that uh, the, after a while the, the customer is taking the, that relationship for granted and uh, may not be, be serious about placing orders, may want more of a social contact and um, so it's, it's perhaps better to keep somewhat more professional about the encounters. But they will have specialist knowledge about the requirements of the market which they're able to pass back to the organization who may set about designing products for that particular market depending on its size and depending on the disposable income within that region. Now the disadvantages of customer based structure. Well the structure is expensive and there tends to be a duplication of effort as I said earlier you may get members of the same team contacting the same customer. So they have to have clear demarcation and it should be org organized well within the team to try to minimize duplication and to try to control costs. The process of controlling and coordinating sales activities may be a challenging task in large, uh, larger organizations that offer wider product range. So controlling, controlling and coordinating sales activities may be a challenging task. Um, it depends on the size of the organization, it depends on the product range. But if the company is producing many products and each member of the, selling, uh, the sales team is expected to know each of the products that can be quite challenging and answering customer questions efficiently with a wide range of products from which to pick that may be difficult and matching customer needs with that product range may be difficult. Um, the, the sales team are not specialists they are uh, in place to make sales and they need to go right across the whole range of products that the companies are producing and try to pick up on what the customer is saying and then try to match that with an available product. But again, as I said, not easy. So these are some of the issues that confront sales organizational structures and we looked at three here, the customer one, the geographic one and the specialization one. Um, it is possible to conceive of more, but just those three for the moment. And that takes us to the end of this video. It's quite a lengthy video. I think uh, you should have stopped the video a few times before you got this far and had a break and perhaps go back to it. Um, but longer videos, uh, that's probably the best uh, tactic in dealing with them. But let's leave it at that for the moment and say, 
thank you for watching.